and we do welcome you all this morning in the Savior's precious name. We're going to join as we worship the Lord together to sing our opening hymn. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord uh, with cheerful voice. Serve him with mirth, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. We'll stand if we can as we worship the Lord together, please. Can we bow, please, for a few moments, just uh, stilling our hearts as we come before the Lord in prayer. Our gracious, loving Father, we do thank thee again this morning for this another opportunity of being able to come into your presence, to be able to lift our hearts in grateful thanks to thee for the manifold grace and the mercy and goodness of God. Lord, we just bow before you this morning to exalt and to magnify and to praise your wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, for the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. We know that thou art God indeed. And Father, without us, uh, Lord, you have created this world. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you not only created it, but dear Father, you sustain it. Uh, Father, you provide for every living thing. We thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that is outside, uh, Father, your control. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace and goodness and love. Oh, Father, we bow before you. Why, what a wonderful God we serve. And Lord, we come before you to worship and to praise thy wonderful name. We're glad, dear Father. Uh, when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to you, dear Father, to uh, acknowledge, Lord, that every good and perfect gift has come down from thy hand. 
Lord, you have given and given and given again. And Lord, we just lift our hearts in grateful thanks to you for all of your provision and all of your mercy and all of your goodness to us. Lord, we thank you, dear Father. We can come with confidence to you today, knowing that you're a God who cares and understand. Lord, you know our need this morning as we come before you. And we ask, Lord, as we seek to worship you, that we might really sense and know the presence of God with us. We pray, Father, that you'll bless. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessings that we've experienced and known. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for all of the, uh, Father, the good things that God has given to us. We want to thank you, dear Father, as we think, Lord, of uh, 70 years of Her Majesty's uh, reign. Uh, Father, we thank you for her life. And Lord, we pray uh, for your blessing upon her. Uh, we ask, loving Father, that, uh, Lord, you continue to uh, minister to your Father, her, and reveal yourself. Lord, so often... It has been sung, God, save our gracious Queen. Lord, we, we pray, dear Father, that, uh, Lord, she might really know the intimacy and the reality of, uh, Father, knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray for all of her family. We ask, Lord, that uh, you will reveal yourself. And, Lord, we pray, dear Father, that our land will continue, uh, Father, to know uh, godly, uh, uh, Father, influences, Lord, in our land. Lord, we pray, dear Father, that you'll undertake. We look to thee, dear Father, for those who are in need today. We, we thank you, Lord, that you're a God who hears and answers prayer. And, Lord, we pray, dear Father, that you'll continue to minister to those who cannot be with us today. We thank you for your hand, even over the week that has passed upon Valerie. We thank you, Lord, that even though there have been extremely difficult days, and Lord, we thank you that you have answered prayer. We thank you, Lord, that your hand has been upon her. We thank you, dear Father, that you have been ministering to her and, Father, to her family at this difficult time. And we commend them all to you afresh. We ask, Lord, that you'll bless. We think of others, Lord, who are not able to be with us this morning. We pray for Harry this morning. We pray for others, Lord, who in recent days have been through operations or tests or those, dear Father, who are just not strong enough to be in the house of God today. We ask, Lord, that you'll minister to them. And Father, we pray for family members and loved ones and neighbors and friends. And Lord, perhaps they do not have the desire to be in your house today. But, Lord, we pray for them. And we ask, Lord, that you'll awaken their hearts. And, Father, help them, dear Father, to see uh, the wonder of your love and the grace of God. We pray, Father, that you'll bring salvation to every home uh, for where there are those who are outside the kingdom. Lord, we long, dear Father, for your blessing. And we pray that you'll undertake. We pray for those who have responsibility of other services today. Again, we pray for Reverend Maxwell. Uh, we ask for James that you'll help him. We think, Lord, of uh, other pastors, dear Father, who are ministering your word. And we ask, Lord, that you'll encourage and that you will bless, dear Father, today. Pray for John Weir. Uh, Lord, as the mission, another mission begins uh, today, we ask, Lord, that you'll bless. We pray for that family in great need in Spain that he has been in contact with. Lord, we pray, dear Father, that you'll reveal yourself. We thank you. You are a very present help in time of need. And Lord, we ask that you'll undertake. We do pray for Stephen and Linda again this morning there in your buildings. We pray that you'll help them, that you'll bless them, uh, Father, as they minister. And Lord, we pray that they will continue to be encouraged. Father, we thank you for your love. And Lord, we pray that even in this place this morning, we might sense and know the help and the blessing of God, for we ask it for Jesus' sake and for his glory. Amen. 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 We have been looking at... Uh, a lecture if this thing works. Okay. Um, was at a lecture of Stuart Burgess uh, a number of weeks ago and was really fascinated just in sim some of the simple things that sometimes we take for granted that reveal the wonder of God's great plan of redemption. We've looked at a number of those things, the fact that 
Uh, God has reminded us in Isaiah uh, that uh, for the Lord said he created the heavens uh, uh, himself, uh, and he said he created it not in vain, but formed it uh, to be inhabited. And everything that we see in the creation and in the world in which God has created, uh, we find so many things that uh, show the, the, the minute detail of God's creation, uh, the way that God has made it is perfectly designed by a loving God so that we can uh, see something of the glory of God. We looked at air uh, and how uh, there are many aspects of air that we sometimes take for granted. Uh, the fact that we can hear sound through air, we can smell uh, through the air, we can see through the air to the beauty of the world around us. We can move through the air and uh, God can change the, 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 the uh, beauty of the creation just by the sun that uh, reflects. We looked at water, again, something that perhaps we uh, take for granted. Uh, that uh, we need. And yet, God has provided everything that we need in the world in which we have. We have water that can be drunk uh, to satisfy our thirst. It can be boiled to uh, uh, boil our potatoes or uh, our pasta, whatever we're having for dinner today. Uh, we can freeze it. Uh, and yet, no matter how large the lumps of ice are, uh, can still float uh, in the water God's beautiful and amazing design. We looked also at some of the materials, uh, the different uh, metals and all of the different metals that we looked at uh, the last time. We want to look at uh, wood again just for a very short time uh, this morning. Again, uh, sometimes we take things for granted, just the things that we see around it. We go out and, uh, into the countryside and we see the beautiful trees and the beauty of God's creation as he has created the world. And yet we realize that uh, the trees are so important for producing oxygen uh, in our world. And uh, th there are many, many animals that find uh, security in their home, even in the trees around about us. Uh, we realize that uh, uh, there, there are many features and many uh, different materials, some uh, very uh, low density, some high density, some very good for insulation, and we can make so many things uh, that make our world a comfortable world to live in. Uh, if you stop and think how many things in your home are made out of wood, some people have wooden floors, others have maybe wooden ceilings, or uh, the chairs are made out of wood, uh, or maybe even the worktop, many, many things that, that uh, are taken and they're made out of wood uh, in order that our world, you might go up the wooden stairs uh, to your bedroom, uh, you might go out into the, the garden and, and have your barbecue at a, a picnic table uh, made of wood, or you, uh, your dinner table as you sit down, or as you relax in your uh, comfortable furniture, all of these things are made. And God has designed our world so that all of these things are there for us to use. And God has uh, designed it in such a way that we can use all of these things uh, in our world. Uh, when you think of how many different kinds of trees there are, uh, and again, uh, all the different types of trees uh, that God has created in His world, they're not all the same. Uh, they don't look the same, and they're, they're, they're certainly not all the same. Uh, and uh, if you think of the variety of types, and there are thousands of types of trees. Uh, and again, they have all different kinds of properties. Uh, some are very hard wood, others are soft. Uh, some are very strong, uh, others are really tough uh, and you can find maybe in a nice home there's a mahogany door uh, and uh, it's a very hard wood and it's able to endure uh, maybe the weather and all of those things. You have pine uh, that is very easy to work with uh, and it's easy to cut uh, and uh, it's very uh, good for furniture as well. Uh, you have strong uh, wood like oak or if you're going to make uh, a cricket bat and you make it out of pine, well, the first time you try to hit the ball, it'll probably break. 
Uh, but uh, willow is a very, very hot, tough uh, type of wood. And if you try to cut it, it's not easy to work with because it's very, very tough. Uh, there are some woods that are very sweet, uh, cedar, uh, others that are rot resistant. Again, these things that God has designed and God has made for a purpose. We have other woods that are light and others that are heavy. Uh, we have some woods that are very, very attractive. Uh, if you work with te teak furniture uh, and, uh, or oak fur furniture, uh, whatever uh, it is uh, that you work with. But then again, there are some, uh, and spruce is quite an amazing uh, wood that because of the pattern uh, of the, the growth during the, the spring and summer, uh, it is made in such a way that it is perfect for making musical instruments. So God has designed our world, all of the things that in our world and so we find that if you want to make a cricket bat or a, a, a sledge a, a shaft or something, then you can use a very hard wood like a willow. Or if you want to make a beautiful instrument, a guitar or a violin or whatever it might be, you can use. And so we find that God has created all of these things. These are designed by God. We know that the young people will be taught in, in school that uh, this world just happened to be. And it's, they will use the word lucky. We're lucky that we have in our world all of these materials. But we know that it has been created by God. God has designed everything that we need. The scripture reminds us uh, uh, that uh, in uh, the book of Genesis, whenever God created, he said, let uh, the earth bring forth grass and uh, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree uh, yielding fruit after its kind. Now, we have looked at trees and we have looked at what can, we can do with the wood. But we realize that uh, so many of the trees bear fruit. And that's a whole different subject. That, uh, that we have such a variety of fruit uh, that grows uh, on trees, and we can enjoy those. Uh, he also said that, that the earth brought forth grass. Uh, and uh, we know that, uh, according to Stuart, uh, anyway, he, he said that there are th uh, three trillion th trees, uh, a bit of a tongue twister, uh, say that ten times before you leave, uh, uh, Three trillion uh, trees uh, produce over 200 uh, billion tons of oxygen in a year. Uh, God has uh, created our world, uh, and he's promised that while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, cold and winter uh, shall not uh, cease. God has designed the world, and we know that this world will be in existence until God declares otherwise. There are many who will try to bring fear into our uh, thinking that somehow our world is uh, falling apart. Well, it is because of sin, but God is still on the, thro the throne, and God is able uh, to, to sustain his world. Uh, I'm not going to take time, but you can think about it. Uh, grass, uh, let the earth bring forth grass. And maybe next week we'll look at grass uh, and how much money people have spent trying to replicate a blade of grass, and yet they fail. We'll look at that maybe the next time. But we thank God that we've got a wonderful God uh, who uh, has created our world. Uh, we have uh, water uh, in abundance. We have air that we can breathe. Uh, we have all of these materials that we can uh, uh, use for whatever means we want in our world so that we can travel, uh, that we can uh, have safety in our homes, and we can make our homes beautiful because God has designed uh, beauty uh, just in uh, the materials that he has uh, created, and we can use them, and he's given us the ability to do that, do that and we ought to give him thanks. Uh, he's a wonderful God and he has cared for us. We're going to sing uh, just now before we go any further. Uh, love uh, with everlasting love, led by grace, 
that love to know. Spirit breathing from above, thou hast taught me it is so. Oh, this full and perfect peace. Oh, this uh, presence so divine in a love that cannot cease. The second verse is, heaven above is softer blue. Earth beneath is sweeter green. Something lives in every hue. The Christless eyes have never seen. There are those who, uh, they look at the world and they don't see the beauty of God's creation. But when grace touches our lives, we see God and his creation and his wisdom and his beauty, even in the world and the things around us. We stand, if we can, as we sing uh, the second hymn.
Now we do want to welcome you uh, this morning in the Saviour's precious name. If you're visiting with us this morning, you're very welcome. We trust that the Lord will bless. If you're here in the sanctuary or the back room or the creche, wherever, uh, online, wherever you may be this morning, we trust that we'll know the presence of God and know the blessing of God. We do welcome you in the Saviour's precious name. Do please remember that there will be a time of prayer uh, via Zoom uh, at three o'clock today uh, if you're able to join. Uh, if you need the, the details for the, uh, the Zoom connection, please say to me and I will uh, make sure you get that. Uh, but do please remember a uh, time of prayer from three to four uh, today at, uh, uh, on Zoom. And then the evening service tonight, uh, there will be a prayer meeting beforehand at 6 o'clock, and then the evening service uh, tonight at 6.30. There will be a wee cup of tea and some light refreshments uh, after the service tonight. So do encourage you to come again, and if you can bring someone with you uh, just for the service tonight at 6.30. Then on uh, Tuesday, God willing, there will be the Bible study at 8 o'clock. And again, that will be on YouTube. Uh, that's on YouTube for uh, the uh, Bible study. The prayer meeting in the will of the Lord will be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. And then next Sunday in the will of the Lord, and there will be Sunday school 10.15, uh, Teen Search 10.30, and also a time of prayer here in the sanctuary at 10.30. Next Sunday, God willing, I will be here uh, to bring God's Word in the morning service at 11.30. That's 11.30 again for our Sunday morning. Then after the service, there will be uh, remembering the Lord's Supper uh, after the service. So do please remember that next Sunday, immediately after uh, the morning service, there will be the observing of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have another cup of tea, uh, so do please remember uh, that's for our evening service. Uh, again, we encourage you to come and encourage others uh, to come along uh, next Sunday evening, 6.30. There will be a time of prayer at uh, 6 o'clock next Sunday as well. do want to thank you for your giving, for those who have been uh, giving toward the uh, Young People's Project. Uh, of hope for Ukraine. Uh, we're very encouraged with uh, those who have given. Uh, I think we have 40 bags filled, uh, and there's a few others uh, to be filled yet. Uh, we are, had aimed at 50 bags for the uh, people from uh, CEF who are working in Ukraine, uh, taking out uh, things for the young people uh, there. Uh, Thank you. Do please pray that God will bless. Every child that receives a bag will receive literature. Uh, there's a number of booklets, uh, and uh, they will receive those booklets. Uh, do you wonder why uh, CF booklet also meet the king? And uh, there will be a, a bookmark uh, and a wonder surf postcard, along with a, a pen and a gospel of John. Uh, those are supplied by the CEF. Uh, and the, the gym bag is also supplied, and uh, a few of the things that maybe we're uh, running short of, as far as I remember. Uh, I think there's some maybe toothbrushes, uh, uh, and maybe I think we have maybe a f need a few uh, bags of, of toothpaste, uh, maybe face cloths, uh, and what else, Johnny? Oh, you, uh, any other? Young people remember, Leah, what else do we need? Toys, a few toys. See any of the young people and they'll sort you out. But thank you very, very much uh, for uh, your giving. I know that the Lord will bless uh, through your giving. And thank you, uh, it was uh, Bethany that first brought it to our attention. And uh, we're thankful to Bethany for uh, suggesting that and for the young people and all of the folk from the church who have been involved in that. Just want to mention also that there will be a ladies' prayer meeting on Monday the 13th of uh, June. That's at F uh, 7.45. Do please remember that, ladies, uh, for a ladies' prayer meeting. I think that's all by way of announcements. I'm going to sing uh, again before we turn to the Word of God. Uh, free from the law, happy condition, Jesus has bled, and there is remission. 
Uh, cursed by the law and bruised by the fall, grace hath redeemed us once for all. We stand to sing. This morning I'd like to turn to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy. And chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'm just reading uh, first 11 verses from 1 Timothy. And chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, mine own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went to, into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables or endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, 
and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside and of vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if it is if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for the a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and mothers, murders of mothers and manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for purges persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of our blessed God, which is was committed to my trust. Just end at verse eleven. And we know the Lord will bless the reading of his word to our hearts. Can we bow, please, again in a moment of prayer? Our loving Father, we do thank you this morning that we can come to worship, uh, Father, to exalt the one who has provided a, a perfect salvation. We come, dear Father, to uh, acknowledge, dear Lord, that Thou art the way, the truth, and the life. That, Lord, we thank you that uh, we come to one who has revealed himself to us in the person of his Son, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have uh, now and forever Lord, we thank you for the salvation that you have provided. And our Father, we pray that you will minister to us this morning as we seek to worship you. We pray, dear Father, as we bow in submission to your word, that you will speak to us, that we will be teachable, that, Father, our hearts will respond. And Father, whatsoever he saith unto us, may we be willing. And Father, and obedient, we pray. Help me, I pray. Father, just be with us this morning and bless your word to our hearts. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. I want us to look at these verses that we've read together this morning. We see the, the purpose uh, for Paul writing to, to young Timothy. Uh, he tells us of that in, in these verses, uh, that he says, I, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, uh, when I went unto Macedonia, Paul had spent a period of time in Ephesus, and in his missionary journey he was going on. Uh, we're not exactly sure of the time, but uh, whenever he was going to Macedonia, uh, he left Timothy, and he gave him this charge. Notice in verse 3, I charge uh, that I might charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Uh, Paul uh, gave him this command or this uh, charge. It was uh, very solemn uh, put to, to, uh, to Timothy. And Paul uh, reminds us here in these verses that uh, the message, he tells us he is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God. By the commandment of God. And Paul is not going with some idea of his own. Uh, this is God's command. Uh, he was sent under divine authority. And uh, he was given the charge. He tells us later on in verse 11 about that charge. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed uh, to my trust. So he had a responsibility uh, to bring God's message and uh, he was placing the responsibility then upon uh, Timothy uh, that uh, he wanted to charge him that, that uh, there would be no other doctrine taught uh, other than the message that came with the divine authority. Uh, 
And uh, we find that, that uh, there were uh, others uh, who are setting themselves up as teachers. Uh, it tells us that uh, Paul was with divine authority. Uh, he didn't run at his own charges. It wasn't uh, his idea. God called him and God sent him uh, with a message. And so uh, he warns in another passage of Scripture in Galatians chapter 1, he warns, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel uh, unto you than that which was preached, uh, let him be accursed. So Paul took very, very seriously uh, the responsibility of bringing God's message and making sure that in the church it was God's word. Uh, not some other message. It's not the message from some others. He tells us uh, again in the same passage in Galatians, uh, as uh, we said unto you, so now I say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have, uh, you have received, let him be accursed. So Paul talks about his authority uh, here. Uh, it is from the command of God. Uh, we cannot put uh, the teaching of any other man on the same level as the message that comes to us from the Word of God. There may be many uh, great teachers over the years in the church, and people have respect, and they, they listen to what this man or that man has written or what he has said. Uh, and uh, we recognize that, that while we may be helped by some of the, the men in the past, uh, it's not on anywhere near the same level. The message that comes from God comes with divine authority. And, and the Word of God is, is not on the same level as, as uh, another man's teaching. Unfortunately, there are many today. And, and they're, they're recognized as uh, leaders, perhaps, in churches across our world. And we have access through the Internet to all kinds of teaching. And uh, we need to be careful that what has been taught is in line with the Word of God. That what uh, our standard is not what this man says or that theologian says or what this book says or what some other preacher says. And Paul is, is emphasizing uh, for, for young Timothy in the church at Ephesus, uh, I charge you, this is a, uh, like a commander in the army giving an order to a, a foot soldier, I, I charge you uh, that and it was quite a charge that he gave him. I uh, besought thee still at Ephesus. Now, he had, he had already, whenever he was in Ephesus, he had already uh, given instruction to Timothy. But now he is reinforcing this. He is, he is going again to, to uh, he says, I've, I, when I was still with you in Macedonia, uh, when I went in, uh, uh, or when Ephesus went into Macedonia, that thou mightst charge some that they teach other uh, uh, no other doctrine. So he gives them that instructions, uh, and he doesn't tell us what exactly these other teachers were teaching, but he does tell us what he thought of it, uh, and. Uh, it tells us here that uh, then they teach no other doctor, neither giving heed to fables uh, or endless genealogies, uh, which minister question rather than godly edifying, uh, and faith so do. So, so what he was really saying is, uh, these people who are teaching, it's only fables. It's not the authority of the Word of God. They're teaching fables or uh, uh, we, we, uh, someone has defined fables as, as untrue uh, or unreal stories that are only believed by gullible people. And these people were, were teaching fables. It wasn't the Word of God that they were teaching. And, and he talks about endless genealogies, uh, which minister questions. So really, uh, th these people were perhaps like those who have an awful lot to say but there's no real benefit in what they do say. In fact, it's harmful. And Paul warned uh, about these preachers who have plenty to say, but it's no benefit. He said that, that uh, endless genealogies uh, which uh, minister questions, they only bring confusion. They cause right questions, but they, they don't help you. We realize that 
uh, the importance of, of the Word of God. The, the Word of God ministers to us. The Word of God is, is, is given to us and is profitable to us. The Word of God will inspire us and, and create faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so we find that uh, whenever we come to listen to the Word of God, we need to make sure that it's the Word of God. That's why we often uh, encourage you to bring a Bible, because uh, it's not what I say. If it doesn't come from the Word of God, well, then you have every right to challenge me uh, and, and to, to check what I say, and, and is it according to the Word of God? Because it is a very solemn responsibility to, to be faithful to the Word of God, to teach the Scriptures, not uh, our own ideas or, or some other notion. Uh, we find here that uh, Paul was, was conscious that there were those who were there, and uh, they, were, they were teaching another doctrine. They were teaching something that wasn't according to the commandment of God and according to the Word of God. And it, it tells us about uh, these men that uh, uh, it talks about them that, that they have uh, for for some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, uh, and again uh, the danger of listening to the wrong kind of teaching on the wrong kind of preaching is, is that you can go off course, you, you can be led astray. If, if the signpost is not clear uh, and, and you follow the wrong directions, you're going to end up in trouble. And, and Paul tells us that these men, they've swerved, they, they've taken off course, uh, they've turned aside. Uh, this, this is, uh, again, uh, he tells us in these verses, uh, from which uh, some having swerved have turned aside. Now, we, we recognize that uh, there, there are those in the Scripture that tells us about those who have uh, left their first love in the book of Revelation. And, and uh, sometimes we misquote the Scripture and we say they lost their first love. But it, is, it was more severe than that. It wasn't that they lost. You can get lost without, unintentionally. But to, to leave... Uh, and, and these men, it wasn't that, that they, were, they were somehow being distracted and, and got off course, but they had deliberately turned uh, onto vain jangling. The word vain just simply means worthless or empty talk. And uh, uh, Paul is, is warning Timothy, and, and he tells us that, that uh, I charge you, uh, uh, or uh, that, that they may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now, that was quite a task for, ta for, for uh, Timothy because he was a young man and he was going to have to stop people in the church teaching the wrong thing. And so uh, these were men uh, who were self-appointed uh, teachers. I said, uh, notice in verse 7, it says that, that from... Uh, which some having swerved, turned aside to vain giant, desiring to be teachers of the law, neither uh, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. And again, these, these were people, and this was a serious warning. There were people who were setting themselves up as teachers, uh, and, and they didn't understand even the, thing, the subject that they were supposed to be teaching. Uh, they didn't understand uh, and, and uh, or whereof they affirm. So uh, we find uh, Paul warning in this passage of Scripture. And so we find that uh, Paul, he, he is very clear. He says uh, he, he was an apostle. God uh, chose him. God put his hand upon him. God called him. God sent him. And he says that God commanded, that the commandment is from God. Uh, our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Uh, and so Paul recognized that he had to be true to the Word of God. We sing that hymn, In Christ Alone My Hope Is Found. And we realize that it is in the gospel, the gospel that comes to us as the command of God, the Word of God that comes with divine authority. 
It is that the gospel is the only thing that can give to us hope in this hopeless, dark, sinful world. And so there is a danger. And uh, the danger was of uh, uh, trying to, to make Christianity all about keeping the rules. And uh, we find here that, that they were teaching the law uh, and, and there are still those who will perhaps think that, that being a Christian is all about don't do this and don't do that. And, and uh, all of those things that, that, well, if you're a Christian, you have to do this and, and you need to do that. And uh, all of these things that, that, are, that are just rules and uh, uh, let uh, things, uh, people will, will tell you, you know, if you're a Christian, well, you go to church, or you read your Bible, or you, you follow these rules. And, and uh, salvation, the, the gospel is not about keeping rules. It's about a relationship with the living God. And it is a message that comes that brings hope. And, and Paul, whenever he was writing here, he, he tells us that the, the, the message that is from God, the message from man, will give you a list of rules and do's and don'ts. But the message from God comes and it brings transformation into the life. Your life is changed by hearing the message of God. And he tells us that uh, the effect of faithful preaching is that the fruit that is produced in our lives of those who will believe. Uh, notice what it says uh, here in these verses. And uh, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of, love, of a conscience, un, uh, 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 and, uh, and sort of a, pure, a good conscience and a faith unfailed. Now, the, the rule keeping cannot transform the heart. It doesn't matter how many rules you keep. It can't change the heart, but the gospel can. And the word that comes from God can. And he reminds us here that uh, the message or uh, the commandment uh, is the same word that is used whenever Paul is speaking about his own experience, that he received a commandment from God. And the commandment that God uh, gave to, to, to Paul was to preach the word, to preach the gospel. And he tells us the, the commandment, uh, for the end of the commandment is charity. The word charity is found so often in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it literally means divine love. Divine love. And, and the gospel brings divine love into the heart of a man or woman. Uh, the gospel uh, purges the conscience, the, the, the guilt can be removed not by keeping rules, but by uh, receiving and believing the gospel. You can have the past blotted out, never to be remembered against you anymore. You can have a clear conscience. The Bible talks about a seared conscience. It's a, it's a graphic picture. Uh, whenever they used to brand animals or even slaves in, in uh, old uh, times past, they would have taken a hot iron and they put it in or an iron into the fire until it was white hot. And then they would have taken it and they would have branded somebody on the arm. And the skin was, was seared. It meant that there was no feeling in it. And the conscience can become seared. If, if you keep on doing the thing that you know is wrong, well then sooner or later that voice that tells you that's wrong will no longer sound in your ear. And, and conscience needs to be enlightened. In some countries, there are things that are accepted that wouldn't be accepted in, a, in, in this country because the light of conscience has, has been in, enlightened. Conscience is not a good guide. Conscience needs to be awakened and illuminated by the Word of God. You, you, can, you can feel perfectly happy in your sin until God opens your eyes and your conscience is awakened and suddenly you realize that you're guilty. But God can remove that guilt. God can blot out the past. God can save. And so we find that, uh, some, uh, uh, that the gospel can bring uh, the, the divine love, a pure love into the heart, that you love the things that honor God. 
and, and a, a pure love is a love that hates the things that is wrong. It's a positive and a negative thing. And, and the conscience needs to be clean and pure. And it's only the gospel can bring a cl clean cl conscience to the heart of man. And he talks about faith that is unfeigned. It's a genuine faith. Uh, the word unfeigned literally means to be without wax. And in Roman times, they would have had statues of, of the emperor or whoever it might have been. And if, if, if part of the nose was broken off, then before the emperor was coming, they would go around and they would make up and put wax in to cover up uh, the, the, the faults. But that was fine until the, the sun began to shine. And then they realized it was fee and it wasn't true. And, and you can have faith that's not real. But, but the gospel creates and, and, and brings life where there's death. And these uh, false accuse, uh, teachers that... that they were causing confusion. They were knocking people off the track. And, and uh, uh, Paul is telling here about these. Uh, they, they desire to be teachers of the law, understanding neither whereof they are firm or uh, what they say or whereof they are firm. Uh, and so uh, Paul teaches us something here that we need to just pause for a moment this morning even to take note of. Uh, what he tells us in this passage of Scripture uh, for we know. Now, when Paul says we know, and he says knowing it in verse 9 and then also in verse 8, what he is really saying is, you know, I want to remind you of something that you ought to know. You ought to really know this. And he tells us here, we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now, again, uh, he is reaffirming the importance of, of knowing these things. Uh, and, and he says, the law is good. The law was given by God. It, it was good. Uh, but what is the purpose of the law? Why did God give us the law? If you try to hammer a nail with a screwdriver, it's not going to work because a screwdriver wasn't designed to hammer nails. But if you use a hammer to hammer nails, well, then it's going to work. And if you use the law right, according to the purpose, uh, then uh, the law is good, but it needs to be used lawfully. And he tells us that uh, knowing that the law was not made for the righteous man. In a sense, the law uh, sets boundaries, it's like a fence uh, in the garden. There's a busy road, and, and uh, the little child is, is allowed to go out into the garden, but the parents who are wise and loving, they put a fence there to keep the, the child safe. And, and uh, the child has freedom to play in the garden, but the fence is the boundary. And God has placed boundaries in His Word. Whenever the children of Israel were in Egypt, uh, they lived under Pharaoh's taskmaster. Uh, but God delivered them. Uh, whenever God sent Moses, he said, let my people go that they might serve me. And, and they were delivered not by keeping laws and rules, but by the grace of God. The hand of God delivered them. God brought them out of the bondage that they were in. And God set them free. But God also placed boundaries around them. I remember years ago doing a study on the Ten Commandments and, and just realizing afresh that all of the commandments are very positive. They, they may be presented to us uh, in a negative form. Thou shalt not. But they're there for protection. They're, they're there to protect you from false worship. We can worship God. Whenever God said to Adam and Eve, you can freely eat of all the trees, in the, but there's a boundary. And whenever God said, what he said, you can worship God, but there are boundaries. And God protects the family. Honor your father and mother. God protects human life. Thou shalt not kill. God protects marriage. Thou shalt not commit adultery. There is freedom 
And the law allows us freedom, but then he warns of the boundaries. And so whenever Paul is writing here, he says, knowing this, that the law was not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient and for the ungodly and for sinners. And, for un- and he lists those who, who, who have gone beyond. I was trying to think of an illustration, and my illustrations are never very good, but I was thinking, you know, if, if you wanted to drive from here to Cork, you could pass a hundred police or Garda Shikana, whatever, on the road, and you don't have to worry one bit about them unless you're breaking the law. So it doesn't matter how many police cars you drive past, you don't have to worry about them if you're not breaking the law. And, and in a sense, if you are going to Cork this morning, you could go any road you want. You could go by Dublin. You could go down to Fermanagh and cross over at, uh, at uh, uh, Cavan and go down through the Midlands. Or if you wanted, you could go head towards Slego and you could go uh, to uh, down that side of the, of the country and you'd eventually get uh, to Cork. But, but there are maybe those who will say, well, you know, the only way to go to Cork is you have to go this way. And you have to turn here, and you have to do it this way. And, and, and legalism brings us under bondage of law, but the gospel sets us free. And so we find that these false teachers, and they, they were bringing confusion. The, uh, the law uh, comes has, is God, has from God. It is a, is a good purpose. It is our schoolmaster to teach us and to lead us. Uh, and we find that and God has set these boundaries. Uh, he tells us, but now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. If you try to keep laws, then, dear friend, your eyes are on the law and, and not on the one who can set you free. But you and I, we recognize that there's one who has perfectly fulfilled the law. And, and there's one who has, by his mercy and grace, and whenever Paul was writing here, He says, the apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Dear friend, the Bible tells us that, that all have come short of the glory of God. We can't keep the law. But it also tells us that in Christ in you is the hope of glory. What you can't do by keeping laws, you can do whenever Christ comes into your heart and life and he is allowed to live by his grace. And Paul says here, Timothy, uh, uh, which mine own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace. There's a divine order there. Grace comes first. We've all broken the law. But grace comes to set us free. Grace comes to lift us up. Grace comes to give to us what we we don't deserve. And grace shows us the love of God. And whenever we uh, see the grace of God, it brings us to the place where we recognize we need the mercy of God. Every one of us have broken the law. Every one of us have fallen short of God's standard. But God offers forgiveness. And, and, and we recognize that we need, we need mercy. We need mercy. And we will never know peace apart from receiving grace and mercy. Then we will know peace. And so we find that God has uh, uh, reminded us in his word uh, that we need to be careful not to teach uh, that, that you can be right with God by doing this and doing that and, and doing the other thing. You can be right with God only when you realize that you're a sinner and that you need Christ and ask him to have mercy and he lifts you and he brings you into the freedom and the liberty. Uh, we uh, reminds us here in these verses 
And I, uh, we find here Paul says, don't teach any other doctrine. And dear friend, that's what we want to do here. We're not pointing you to a whole list of rules and regulations to say, you know, if, if you stop doing this and you start doing that, well, then you can become a Christian. But dear friend, if you recognize that Jesus came because he loves you and he came so that he might save you, Paul said later on, and we maybe look at that beautiful text tonight, that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. And he is the one who can reconcile us to God. He is the one, and it's only in him and in him alone. And so we find uh, that uh, we, we have this passage of Scripture where Paul is, is giving instructions to Timothy. See, you don't teach anything else. This is the message. This is the gospel, the gospel that has been committed to my trust. And dear friends, as we, as we come Sunday by Sunday to the house of God, we want, to, we want to find out the liberty that God has given to us in his word, the place of blessing that God wants us to live in, the freedom and the joy of knowing Christ, not trying. We had, unfortunately, in one of the churches that I was involved in, a man, and he'd been involved in the church for a long time, you know, I was convinced the longer that I watched that dear man, I thought that man is trying to be a Christian. He's trying to be a Christian. Maybe you're trying to be a Christian, but you've never received Christ. And you've never had your past forgiven and you've never been given liberty. And you've never experienced the hope that it can only be found in Christ. The end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience and faith unfeigned. Only the gospel can do that for you. Only the gospel can fill your heart with love and clear your conscience from guilt and give you a faith standing and resting on the finished work of Christ. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. I'm going to sing that beautiful piece. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is the light and strength and so on.
sing this through twice. Loving Father, we do thank you for a perfect salvation. We thank you for one who has finished the work. We thank you, Lord, that you provided a gift. We pray, dear Father, that, Lord, each one will experience what it is to know hope that is found in Christ alone, not in our efforts, not in all of our doing. But, Father, knowing the spirit of the living Christ living in us. So, Lord, set your seal upon your word. Father, we pray that you will just uh, be with us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide upon us now and always for Jesus' sake.